there, uh, welcome back. So today we're gonna be creating a level select screen to go with our different levels that we created last time. Um, the level select is kind of a big topic, so I'm gonna split it into three different parts. Uh, today we'll talk about setting up the UI elements, um, and then I'll, I'll have another video that goes over the code behind making the UI elements work, and then I'll have a third video that covers how to create a custom save bin file that you can use so that you can save your progress on a level, uh, how many stars the person may have earned, um, if you want to do the star thing, what their high score was, and whether or not they cleared the level so that you're keeping that progress in a relatively safe place. Um, you don't really want to use player prefs for stuff like that, but we'll, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention was I'm going to be changing the assets I'm using a bit here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the UI I came up with for this. It's super simple, and we can just do better. So if you've never heard of the website OpenGameArt.org, uh, OpenGameArt is a website you can go to, and you can find uh, different assets that you can use, 2D and 3D um, art and music, that you can use depending on what their license is. You, whenever you're using something from Open Game Art, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what the license that you're, you can use it under is. If it's CC0, then you can use it for anything you want to, paid or non-paid. Uh, you don't have to give attribution, but of course it's always appreciated. So we're going to be using this uh, free game GUI from opengameart.org. It has quite a few bubbles, and it kind of goes with uh, the style that we're trying to create here. It also has some suggested layouts for level select. We're going to be doing something slightly different than this, um, but it has everything kind of neatly organized so that you can find what you want. The zip file comes with a PNG that has these elements, and it also comes, more importantly, with a SVG file that you can use to isolate anything that you want and remove anything you don't want in Inkscape or Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator or whatever your favorite vector program is. So we're going to be using this. Uh, we're just going to be using bits and pieces of it. We don't need all, you know, 55 buttons or whatever we have here, but if you want to use more, that's fine. And if you want to use any other GUI that you have, totally fine. The person who made this um, has their own website as well, uh, gameart2d.com where you can find a whole bunch of free stuff. They're not quite Kenny level as far as the free stuff they're giving away, but it's a completely different style, so some of you might enjoy that. Uh, there's a lot of platformer stuff. There's some jelly squash sprites that have little faces. Um, so if you, if you want to, if you're planning on making a lot of 2D stuff, you might want to check that out. The other thing that I'm going to be doing is uh, I had been asked a few times to add animations to our sprites, I didn't want to go through creating the animations myself because I'm working on some other stuff right now, but uh, this person, uh, Jerome or Jerome, they added some uh, animated sprites that they had created for their own candy jam, but they didn't end up making the game. This is um, Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0, and what this means is you can, let's just open this up so you can see what that uh, license means. So you're free to share, copy, and redistribute the material in any medium or format. That means that you're allowed to use it in commercial products. You're allowed to adapt, remix, transform, and build upon the material for any purpose, even commercially. So you can change these if you want to, so long as you uh, attribute. And so you have to give appropriate credit. So um, in the actual game itself, you need to give a link to the license and indicate if changes were made. Um, and then you also need to share alike. So if you remix, transform, or build upon the material, you must distribute your contributions under the same license as the original. So if we make any changes to this, which I'm planning on doing, so I have to make them uh, available under the same uh, uh, under the same license. So these, just to show you what they look like, um, the way that they're animated, they all have these different colors and they all have a face for people who are colorblind to still be able to see it. And then there's a little like, shimmer that you can make go across, and we'll cover that relatively soon here. Um, they also have 
a really, really short animation for popping, which I think is nice. So we're going to be using this eventually too, but we're not putting those in today. I just wanted to talk about it. Okay, so in our Unity project here, the first thing we want to do is go to our Scenes folder, uh, right-click, we're going to choose Create, and we're going to create a new scene. And I'm going to call this one um, Splash, because it's the essentially the splash page of the app. Um, you can call yours whatever you want to, open, uh, other scene, level, whatever you want. This is going to house, this scene is going to house not just the level select, but also the opening scene that people see when they start the game. So um, we're just creating one part of it right now. We're going to create the rest of it later. I really hate this Unity Blue, so the first thing I always do when I make a new scene is change the camera background to something a little less... Um, not great. So I have a folder um, that I have a Google Drive link to that has uh, the art that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to upload that folder to my Unity right now. I called it Mixture, but I'm going to change the name to UI so it's easy to use, or at least easy to find. Uh, so Mixture, change this to UI. And I'm just going to drag that folder into my art folder to make it part of it so that I'm not continuing to kind of clutter up this. So inside my UI folder here, um, first thing I'm going to do is use the background. So I'm going to create a UI panel. And on this panel, I'm going to change the... Um, actually, I don't want this to be a panel. Sorry. There's not really a difference between a panel and an image aside from their presets, but I still want to put this as an image because I want to keep it kind of separate. So I'm going to go over to scene here. I'm going to resize this to take up everything. And then I want to change the anchors to be at the corners. And that's a preset on Unity. If you hold down uh, option, when you go here to this rect transform, you can see how it's changing. This is moving the anchors to those positions. So like down here moves the anchors bottom center, up here moves them you know, center center. If I hold down, then clicking on these changes in which direction it scales. And I want it to scale to the entire screen size. And then I'm going to grab this image labeled BG, just pull that in. So I have this kind of nice little cartoony sky background. Looks nice and kind of fits the theme that we're going for here. Uh, I'm going to re-label this from image to background. And then I want to do something to the canvas really quickly. Right now the canvas scalar portion of this is in constant pixel size. And that means that whatever I have is my uh, pixel size for my screen under the game view is going to be its reference size and so things are going to appear based on that but if you're using a a phone or a device that has a different um, pixel density then things can kind of misshape themselves in kind of weird ways so I want to change this from pixel size to scale with uh, screen size and I want to put my reference size as 500 by 800, which is a little small, but there are some phones out there that still have um, displays that have this this small resolution. Um, I want to choose match width or height, and it's more important it matches the width, so I'm going to keep that width slider over here. I'm not going to change the reference pixels for what we're doing today. So there we go. Now to my canvas here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to UI, I'm going to add a panel and I'm going to rename this uh, Level Select. And the way I'm going to manage having both the splash screen and the Level Select screen be in the same scene is I'm going to have different panels that hold them. So Level Select. It would help if I could type this morning. I'm going to make my color on this fully transparent so that it's 100% see-through. Now this Level Select panel is going to hold everything and I have a basic idea of what I want my level select screen to look like. Um, let me show you what's kind of in my mind. Okay, so I just did a Google search for casual game level select, 
Uh, I know that Candy Crush's level select screen looks similar to this. It's not the same. This is for one of the Cut the Rope games where you can tell which levels you can go to, which levels you can't. You can pan left and right on it. This is significantly more involved than another type of level select screen that I think gets most of the point across. So for this, you'd need to have all of this art that you'd construct, and then you'd uh, construct these different buttons here in the UI and make sure that they're anchored to where they're supposed to be. And you can make this sliding screen in Unity um, by using something called a scroll rect, I think is what it's called. Create UI scroll view. When you can make that scroll view go horizontal, vertical, or both. So you can make something like this. However, I think that's kind of out of the scope of this. Um, if you want some general pointers on how to do that, you can message me and I'll, I'll give you some general pointers in the direction. Um, okay, but the level select screen that I want to make is something that's more like, I just saw it, oh, here it is. Something's more like this. Not exactly like this. Ours is, I think, gonna look kind of nicer, but that's me, where we have level select, we have our levels laid out in kind of a nice neat grid. Um, levels that are active have one color, and you can see how many stars you earned. Levels that are inactive are grayed out with a little lock on them. Uh, we're gonna have little arrow buttons here to page through them, and then a home button down here, because putting that home button up here, or the back button, whatever, makes it really hard to reach. You have to do some finger yoga if you're using a bigger phone. Um, and, yeah, that's what we're going to be going for. So back here, uh, we're going to need to have our level select image at the top. We're going to need to have a panel within a panel that's going to hold uh, all of our levels. And then inside the levels, we're going to have another panel within a panel. So it's panel section that we're going to use to create a grid. And then we're going to have three buttons down here. We're also going to have a confirm panel that pops up. Uh, that we can use either to view our stats for the level, play the level, or go back. So that's what we're creating right now. So first thing I want to do, uh, with level select highlighted, I'm going to right click and choose to create a new panel. Panels by default um, are at all four edges. I'm going to downsize this just a little bit. Um, actually, a bit more than a little bit. I'm going to make it kind of up there, make sure it's centered, bring it down, cool. Um, I'm going to change the transparency so that it's fully opaque, and I'm going to move these little white triangle dewy boppies, the anchors, I'm going to move them to be exactly where the edges of this frame are, or not exactly, but as close as I can. Um, I'm sure that this maybe isn't the best way to do it, but I've made apps and games that are on multiple screen sizes with Unity before, and this is how I make sure that it's always where I want it. Um, like I said, I'm sure there's a better way. Okay, I'm going to change the graphic for this panel to be uh, Window 2 from my UI. So I can just grab Window 2 and drag it onto uh, Source Image. So there we go. Um, I'm going to change this panel to be, we'll call this Level select yeah we'll just call it level select and then inside here i'm going to make another panel and because this is a child of that one it doesn't screen or doesn't uh, stretch to be the full screen it only stretches to be the size of its container uh, i'll make this fully opaque and actually you know i want this one to be transparent because this is just going to be kind of like a like a holder item. And I'm going to resize this to be down here and down there because this is where we're going to see our actual grid of levels. And then I'll move my anchors to be there. So if you guys, it's really hard to see these, these little triangle dealy bobbies. Um, so I just reassign them. If you didn't want to do that, you could probably just leave it centered and it would probably be okay. So in this panel I'm going to call level grid and exactly what makes it a grid. Okay, uh, sorry for that weird cut. So 
in the level grid object, we're going to choose add component. And if you type in grid, we're looking for a grid layout group. Um, we're going to ignore the cell size for now. And what we want to do though, is we want to make sure that we set the start corner to upper left, start axis to horizontal, meaning it's going to go left to right first. Child alignment, I'm going to move to middle center so that the child automatically aligns middle center, but it'll be okay. And for my constraint, I'm going to do a fixed column count. I want there to always be three columns. Um, and I'm going to have to do some spacing here, but I'll figure that out in a minute. All right, so now, as a child of this level grid, I'm going to create a new image. So I'm going to right-click level grid, go to UI, and go to image. And I'm going to name this image, we'll just call this Level Prefab. And this should have automatically put it middle center. There we go. Um, so I just duplicated it there and it put it in the right place. So cool. It's where it should be. Um, now this level prefab is going to be the level that we want to click on. So I'm going to set the image for this to be level blank. So it kind of looks like that. I'm going to make uh, as a child of this some text. So UI text. And I'm going to set this text to be bounded by that kind of inner blobby rectangle. I'm going to leave its anchor in the center there. That should be fine. I'm going to change where it says new text to just two zeros. I'm going to center it, uh, change it from normal to bold, change the color to white, and then choose best fit. And that'll make it nice. Sorry about that. That'll make it nice and big. So that's the level number. I also like it when they have how many stars right here, so you don't have to click it to see how many stars you have. Um, so I'm going to add that. And I'm also going to change this from text to level text. And also as a child of the level prefab, I'm going to make a UI image. I'm going to change the size of this image to be pretty small. We'll go 32 by 32. And then I'm going to anchor this one to the lower left. I'm going to move it so that it's actually outside even of the parent. I'm going to put it right there. So it's kind of on this left edge. So my position is 16, negative 16. So I'm going to create another one of these. And I'm going to anchor this one, middle center. And I'll move this one to be in the direct center. So I make my position 0 on x and negative 16 on y. And then I will make another one and anchor this one bottom right. And I'll move this right there. So it's negative 16, negative 16 again. Now I'm going to change these from being images to being star 1, star 2, and star 3. Now, these are going to have the star blank as their image. So all three of these are going to get star blank as their source image. And, all right, cool. I don't need to worry about preserving the aspect. So I click away, and I just want to look at this in game view. That looks pretty good. Now, each of these stars is also going to have a filled star to go on top of it. So for star one, I'm going to uh, duplicate that make it a child of star one, and then I'm going to change the graphic to be star. So there we go, looks like the star is filled in. I'm gonna repeat that process for each of these. So I'm gonna duplicate star two, drag star two one onto star two, so it's a child of it, and pull it on. Oh, one thing I want to do too with these star one, I don't want its um, anchor to be lower left. I want its anchor to be middle center. Same thing with star two. 
I want its anchor to be middle center. And then I will duplicate star 3, make it a child of star 3, reset the anchor, and then change the source image. Alright, cool. So what we'll do essentially is we'll have a little script on here that'll read how many stars we should have and then it will set these stars active, one, two, or three, depending on how many stars we should have. We should have one star, set one star active, two stars, two stars, and so on. So this is kind of our, our blank little level here. Um, I'm going to just kind of collapse everything. That's kind of all we need to make for the level prefab. We'll do the code for it uh, in the next video. Now, I want to have three different buttons down here. So, in my level select panel, I'm going to right click, choose UI, and I want to choose button. And this first one, I'm going to call it right. I'm going to move this down to the bottom of the screen, reset the anchor, and then kind of reset the size here too. And I'm also going to delete the text. I'm going to duplicate, oops, I'm going to do that. I'm going to duplicate this right button. And I'm going to move it to the left, anchor it to the bottom left, and I'll rename it left button. All right, and I'm going to change the uh, images for these. So if I go, there it is. So there's my left arrow. And I want to preserve the aspect, which means I'm going to have to play with the size a little bit here to make it about what I want. And I'm going to do the same thing with the right button. Preserve the aspect and play with the size a little bit. Actually, let's do it this way. This is smarter. So my, let's just make these nice neat numbers. Let's say we've got 80 width on X and 80 height on Y. Let's just do the same thing for this. 80 by 80. And then we'll make position X negative 50. Uh, position Y 55. And then this one 50 and position Y 55. Alright, cool. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add a button in the center to go home. So another button. This one is going to go bottom center. This one is going to keep the text though. And I'll change the anchor to be bottom center. And I'll call this home button. And then this is going to get the blank button uh, as its uh, source image. So I'll pull that in. And preserve aspect. And resize it. And let's see, height, I'm going to make 80, just like those other two. And that's pretty good. Now for my text. Um, I'm going to change this from button to home, font style to bold, color to white, and best fit. I'm going to move this up a little bit because it's conforming to the entire container when it should be conforming to that um, centermost or innermost, whatever, little rectangle there. So if we look over here in game view, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, a few more things we're going to add. We want to have a little banner at the top. So I'm going to go to my level select, create an image, and move this all the way up to the top. And I'm going to resize this in both directions. There we go. And I have a level select banner. I can change that too. That oh, looks good right there. Uh, maybe down just a tiny bit. 
maybe a little more. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to anchor this upper center. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, we're going to make a confirm box, too. So let me change this image to level select banner. Now, by making all of these things children's children of the level select panel, if I turn the level select panel all that off, all that level select stuff goes away. And on top of that, I can animate the entire panel to do things. Like I can move this whole thing in using that animation system we went over a couple lessons ago. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do by keeping this centered. So we could have the level select panel off and then have another panel that's like open game and has like our game name, great view play button, settings button, whatever. And then when we hit play, level select turns on. And then you choose your level, confirm, and then you go to your level. So this is just one scene that we need to do stuff that a lot of people tend to use two or three scenes for, which in my mind isn't necessarily the best thing. Anyway, back to this. Um, so we're going to make another panel uh, that's separate from the level select panel. Uh, and I'm going to name this confirm panel. And I'm going to resize this to be just underneath that level select banner. And I want it to be about the same width as the level select panel was. And I want it to cover these buttons down here so that it's kind of difficult to accidentally click them. Uh, I'm going to resize the anchors to be where I want them to be. Um, this is fiddly work. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to make this fully opaque. I can still kind of see one of those buttons. So I'm going to go over move the anchor cool and now this is going to get uh, window 2 as its source image as well how does that look yeah it's okay I'll move okay you guys didn't come here to watch me just kind of fiddle with stuff so I'm going to move on um, alright so this is going to be confirming. Um, that means in this panel, I want to have images to show how many uh, stars the person might have earned. So actually, let me delete this really quickly. So inside the confirm panel, I'm going to have another panel, UI panel. And this is going to fit this area down here where stuff is going to go. And I'll make this transparent. So you won't even notice it's there. And I'm going to resize the anchors to be there. And then, I don't know, I'll just call this like holder panel or something like that. And then in here, I'm going to make a few different things. I'm going to make UI image, I'll call this star one. And I'll put this up here and anchor it to the upper left and give it the blank star as a source and then I'm going to duplicate this twice so that I've got star 2 which is going to go directly in the center anchored in the center up and then I'm going to go to star 3 which is going to go over here and I want to go so that one is 61 on X. Let's just round that and make it 60. Uh, this one is going to go top right and negative 60. All right, cool. So there's my three blank stars. And I'm going to, again, make a child image for the other star. UI image so that we can see it when it's filled and when it's not filled UI image star alright cool so if we turn these off 
that means that we're essentially turning that star off and then we can have a little script to feed through the confirm panel how many stars to set active. So this is going to be star 2 and this is going to be star 3 and then I'm just going to name these three things star. So there we go. Okay, cool. Now, we haven't talked about using coins or money or whatever. Um, I just liked the way that this one panel that I have labeled Window 3 looked. So I'm going to collapse these stars. And inside my holder panel, I'm going to make a UI image. And this is going to hold uh, some information about like high score and how many stars they've earned, despite the fact that you can see it right there. So this is going to get the window 3 source image. So it looks like that. I want to preserve aspects so it doesn't look distorted. A little bit bigger. Kind of center it there. All right, that looks good. Um, I'm going to set these to be here and here. Now I'm going to make two more buttons. One to play the level and one to cancel out of this confirm panel. So I'm going to change this from saying image to saying stats and in my holder panel I'm going to make a UI button and move this button down here, resize it, uh, remove the text element Let's anchor it to the lower right, and let's make this the green play button. Preserve aspect, so I'm going to have to resize this a bit. Okay, that's okay. Um, so let's kind of clean this up, let's make this 90 by 80, yeah, that's pretty good, and then for my position on X, we'll make that negative 50, and position on Y, we'll make that 34, so that's nice and clean, all right, cool, I'm going to duplicate this button, center it, or anchor it to the lower left, and move it over here, and what did I say, 50, yeah, 34, so, and then this one is going to get the red X, Let's see what that looks like in the game view, yeah, that's good. Cool. So, um, this all goes inside the confirm panel. The confirm panel will be turned on or off when you choose one of your levels. There will, of course, be more than one level. Uh, we're going to fill up this little grid with them. We're going to cut. Oh, actually, might as well cover that right now because there's a little bit of stuff that goes with it. So, in my level grid, I have my level prefab. I'm going to make eight duplicates of this. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see how these are all kind of bunched up together? That's because the level grid doesn't have any spacing in. So, I'm going to add some spacing on X first. And try with 50. That's way too much. So, let's do 40, 45, 35, 30. Let's go 24. Cool. And then let's space on Y. This is probably going to need to be a bit bigger because of those stars. So I'm going to give this 48 on Y. Awesome. And that looks pretty good. So the idea is, since we have, also since we have our, like our, um, level select stuff all in one panel. This level grid, when we press the right button, we can swap this out for another level grid. Same thing when you press the left button. Um, all of these will be numbered 
and we'll be able to change their graphic from this one to the locked one. Uh, when you click on a button, we're going to do the script that actually brings up that confirm panel. And then in that confirm panel, there's going to be a script that's going to populate the stars and everything. Uh, and when you click play, then it's going to load the actual game level. So, yeah. This is a longer video already. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing. Haha. -ha. I knew I forgot something. So, in my level prefab here, and I guess I can do it to all of these level prefabs. I'm going to add a quick component, and that component is the button script. If you didn't know this about the UI, you can turn anything into a button. You just have to add the button script to it. So, like, I could turn this banner into a button by just adding the button script. I could turn, I don't know, text or anything could be a button. So, if I hit play here, you can see that... All of these act like they should be interactable, but nothing's happening because we haven't done any scripting. Uh, but yeah, and then the idea is this confirm panel would turn on, and then you would choose to either play or quit, or at least exit the confirm panel. So yeah, there we go. That's the basics of our UI setup. Next time we're going to talk about the actual scripting behind it, and then we're going to... Um, uh, go over how we can save information to a custom binary file that we can use to um, read information back to determine where the player was as a save system. So yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. You can join my Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. Um, yeah, and oh yeah, I have links to the assets and stuff in the description below. So. Have yourself a wonderful day.